This is how to play a par three. We're gonna do four par threes. This one is 127. We start with a shorty. Let's say from 125, you hit a seven iron. It's got a little fader on it. You're scared of leaving it in the bunker. You're scared of making a screw up. Look how much space we have on the left-hand side there, that if you hit it there, you actually open up the green for an easy chip. We can just turn it into a short par four. It's easy. You don't have to feel the pressure of the PGA Tour delusion of grandeur syndrome. You can hit it way left with your beautiful 130 yard club with a fader on it. And then just leave it there on the left side, away from the bunker. It's just short. And now we have a chip and a putt on. For me as a low single figure handicap, this is an attacking shot. So we're not on the green, but we've got all the space left here that we noticed on the tee to see where we could miss. Around the greens, if you're able to, you can putt this. So let's see how a putt goes. You just want to make sure you hit enough to get on the green, like that. So that's one way to get on. And the reason I do this is because the lower you keep the ball to the ground, the more chance you have of a good shot. The more loft you have, the more chance you have of a chunk or a blade. So I loft down to like a nine iron, toe down chipping. Let's try a toe down chip. Haven't done this for a couple months. And we want to just hit like a putting stroke off the toe of the club, get close to the ball. And that works as well. But you want to bring the loft down. The lower your loft, the closer it is to the ground, the more margin you have to make a good shot. This one is 175 yards to the hole, 180 yards to the back edge about. For me, with water in front, all I want to do is clear this water, make sure I have a putt, and if not a putt, a simple enough chip, but I want to be dry. So I'm going to hit a club that gets me to the back edge there at 180. You do you. It's going to be a good strike with a forceful swing from me. Now that's going to be left edge of the green, just on the back left edge of the green, and that's dry, puttable, perfect. If you don't have the power to fly at 170 yards, the water's in your head, guys, move up a tee. And if you can't move up a tee, you're going to have to lay it up. Get my second on, take a four. People are going to ridicule you, but not the people making double bogeys. Good line, wrong strong. Okay, gang bangers, we've got 212 yards into the breeze, hell of a long way, over bunkers, big chance of going in that bunker, no chance of par from there. A lot of people get intimidated 220 yards to the hole. Do you have that club to carry all the way there? No, you probably don't. Most people don't. Even I today would hit a four iron and struggle to reach the back of the green. I'm going to set this up left with a six iron that opens the green up to allow a pitch shot. You want to just add one to the par of the hole, except this is a crazy long hole. Anybody who can go for this hole doesn't need to watch this video. I mean, what kind of a shot is that? That's a crap shot. It's opened up the green for a pitch shot. We're not in the bunker. Let's go. We're in play, right? So we're not in the bunkers. The bunkers are very scary for 30, 40 yard bunker shots. We've got a 65 yard shot here. So we're just going to take that 56 degree and make sure we get it on the green for a putt for par. We're on the green somewhere. That's all we need. Happy to two putt from here. And then GTFO with a beautiful bogue. Hmm? Look at that. Easy as you like. This is a 160 yard par three. It's pretty straightforward. We've got the pin tucked slightly behind the bunkers, but if you have the carry distance of 160 yards, which you have to know for par three success, you have to know your carry distance, no questions. And the best way to do that is a GPS watch or a TrackMan session. GPS watch is better because it's actually done on course where TrackMan, you smash the ball without fear of the consequence. And I just have to know my shot shape. So start it on the right side of the green and I know it's gonna go left, left a little side. bit if it doesn't. So it went left a bit, going dead at the pin. Beautiful shot. That's now, when you have confidentiality with a club. What if you are like hitting five iron from 160 or something lower lofted that doesn't get that high? You're scared of that bunker. You're scared you're going to roll into it. Well, stay away from it. Look at the right side there. There's so much space up toward that golf cart and left of it. It can either roll onto the green or it can just stay up on the right side and you just chip and putt for a par. 
If you have trouble with this distance, you're probably in a position where a bogey is going to be a decent play here. So let's give ourselves the best chance by sticking on the right side. Maybe we hit a little fader. Just like that. So that's a little fader. And it's going to roll up there a little bit and then we'll just chip and putt from there, try and make the bogey. Hey, nothing wrong with a bogey. Well, 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 what do we have here? I love history. You know me, I'm a big history buff. I've got a letter in my hands from Theodore Roosevelt. This is from Historic Mail. And Historic Mail is a very thoughtful gift for people who love history and also the lost art of letter giving. When last did you get something in the mail and you were like, come on! Every time you get something, unless it's a bill. It also makes a great gift for people who already have everything. It was started by a group of history enthusiasts who relished the idea of getting letters from historical figures weekly, almost as if directly from Benjamin Franklin or Thomas Edison's desk straight to yours. Every week, a stamped envelope is delivered to your doorstep containing the reproduction of a letter penned by a famous historical figure, supported by a document providing historical context and a typed version of the letter. You get to learn about the fascinating inner lives of the greatest historical figures from the primary source itself. The American History Gift Pack covers letters from 1776 with the founding of the Republic all the way to 1976 with the Cold War at its height, featuring letters from the presidents such as George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and Franklin D. Roosevelt, as well as other great historical figures who greatly influenced American life such as Walt Disney, Tesla, and Twain. You can also send a beautiful gift certificate with your name and the receiver's name on it to make it even more personal. Historic Mail offers 10 weekly letters for only $59.99. There are also letter packs for 25 letters and a yearly pack of 52 letters for more in-depth exploration through various periods of history. Get your last minute Christmas gifts at historicmail.com forward slash golf sidekick and get 10% off on Historic Mail with my code golf sidekick. Surprise a loved one with a timeless gift. What a life. It's a difficult shot from this firm turf to be able to hit a 56 degree with enough air to get to the green and hold the green with some spin. So I'm just going to try to hit a 7 iron along the ground here. Just the number one priority is to get it on the green, get yourself a putt. So that's on the green. I think that's better than I would do with a 56 degree from this very firm turf. And we've got ourselves a putt for a par. Remember, that's the number one objective whenever you're playing a hole in golf. Yeah. Beautiful greens, nice and pure. Two putt. Look at that, that's a Bogues. Now this one I left a little short. We hit a nice little putt there, give it a chance. Oh, a little too much. But we watched it, we watched it go back this way. We're gonna definitely hold this bad boy because we have the belief, we have faith like potatoes. Why? Because I am a potato. And just on the left side there, bring it in. Beautiful par, just like, I, just like I do, you know me, you know me, you just have to have confidentiality. Thank you, Bob Rotella. This is how to play long par four holes, anything over about 380 yards. The first hole here is 390 yards, and I'm going to hit a four iron, and I'll explain why. Now you're ice cold, unless you've been to the range. Maybe you haven't played in the week, maybe you haven't been to the range. We need to get a ball in play ASAP, regardless of handicap. We're breaking up this long hole into multiple shots that we know how to hit. So I've got 176 here, I'm gonna hit an eight iron. Disregard what I'm hitting. Yes, it's easier for me to hit an eight iron here, but potentially you have 176 and you're hitting a hybrid from here. Oh, sure. Majority of the time, a long par four, because of the length alone, will be a low stroke index. So don't worry about it. Most people need to take bogeys on these holes. Always aim for a par, if you can. But otherwise, start the hole with the idea that a bogey is a good score. Now, I'm in the bunker here. Of course, as a low handicap, I want to make a par. Maybe it's not going to happen. That's okay. We just have a lot more opportunities. But as long as we're getting up and around the green in two shots, on the green in three, around the green in three in putable places, we're gonna score bogeys maximum. And that's when your score comes down. Wow, look at that. Always look for places that you can miss on this hole. On the right side here, there's so much space. 
Look for places to go that's going to maximize your chance of getting the ball up and down for par and make at worst a bogey. Are you long enough to reach this in two shots? We have to be realistic. We're into a breeze. It's probably playing 450, 455. That's a long ass hole. And if you look at the distance, divide that by two. That's 225, 230 yard shot per shot. Two shots to get to that green with water in between you and the green. The only time you want to hit this driver or the club that's going to be the longest is if you are sure that you are going to get it in play. Now, to me, this is not a great hole to my eye. It's got a lot of bush on the right. That's ball gone. I can't see left and I don't know what shot shape is going to come out. If I fade it, am I going to hit this tree? Whatever. Let's hope for a draw. Yep, no good. See, that's why I don't hit it. Often you're going to feel like you're not keeping up with the buoys, you know, you're not taking it on. When those buoys are hitting the ball into the bushes and they're having to re-tee up there or cheat by dropping over there, you're going to be the guy in the fairway with a shot. This is the main thing for long par fours. Have a shot after your tee shot. From here, we can look at this as a 236 yard par four. We have water between us and the next fairway. We need to either lay it up short of that or hit it over. We have wind into us, so I'm going to lay it up short leaving a distance say, I want to hit. See how stress-free it is. I mean, you might not, you, you don't even know, you might be so stress-free you put that close for a par. But let's go for the big shot and show you. So here's why I don't advocate for the big shot, because if you have a 236 yard club into the wind, fantastic. But how many people have that comfortable club? I don't think I do. At this stage, I don't, not into the wind. So we're into the breeze, so, Normally what happens is you've got a 220 yard club or 210 and you want to whack it but then you top it into the water, you slice it into the woods, there's water right of the green but we've got so much space on the left hand side. So if I set this up at the pin, I'm going to have to hit a big hook to get more distance, more rollout through the wind. That's not a really low stress shot for me, a big hook with a low lofted four iron giving it more chance to top and hook. But I'm going to try it even though I don't, it's not really my favorite kind of shot to hit and it's too high risk. I might pull it off, but I would never do this generally. Even still, even still with the best shot I can possibly hit, that's the best draw hook four iron I've ever hit in my life. I'm still just greenside short, but it was a high stress shot. We've given ourselves 131 yards. We got into the breeze a little bit. We're downhill on the down slope. So we have to adjust our shoulders a little bit, but it's gonna cause a little low squirter. So we're gonna take a pitching wedge instead of a 48 degree. And we're just gonna punch this one. And get, try to get it to the back of the green. Back edge is always a good number. So I've overthought that one and I've left it a bit left there. But you know what, we're puttable in one over regulation from the T 450 yards, not bad for 90% of golfers. We're greenside in three. We're not, feeling, we're not feeling great because we've got this long pitch, but you have to look at it this way. You're not short-sided. You're not pitching from that side onto a side slope. You've got all this run up here. Now, my suggestion, which I like, is a toe down chipping. We're gonna take a five iron here. Rock, just landed a couple yards on the green. It's gonna break left to rider. Watch that shot, look at this. Look at that shot. Why did I take a five iron? Because we're gonna carry it a certain amount onto the green. The ratio is correct that if I fly it five yards, it's gonna roll out another 20 yards, 25 yards, something like that. One of the most fascinating things when I show people how to play this game is that they get so poopy pants because I don't hit driver that much, but yet my scores stay low. How is that possible? Get the ball in play and then set up our third shot like a bouse. That way it's stress-free, easy. Now I know I'm a cheeky boy, but a cheeky boy gets it done. Look at this, 222 to the hole. So we've got 222. We can take it on and hit something at the top of our bag, which is terrible because that's when you force the slices, the tops, the shanks, because you're hitting it too hot. We've got lots of space there to the left. Hit something up there for a comfortable pitch onto the green, 
I don't know, let's put like 50 or 60 yards in. So we'll hit a 160 yard club down at the middle of that house. There we go. And from there, that's a very stress-free shot. You also have that shot. Don't tell me you don't have that shot. Everybody has that shot. If it's not 160, maybe it's 130. And from there, with a 130 shot, you have a 90 or 95 yard shot in, making this the easiest game on earth, chopping it up. No. Listen, Caddy, if we don't make birdies today, no birdie, no birdie, no tip, eh? This is how to play a par five. It's about 515 yards. Now you have to take your most confidential club off the tee. Par fives are generally attack holes for low handicaps. And for higher handicaps, you need to get three decent shots in a row, which is very difficult. So that's why I advocate for hitting four shots at a higher handicap, just comfortable shots. If you have a better ability, three comfy shots. Pulled it a bit. So we get, we have 277 yards to the hole. That's a long shot. Now the temptation for some people, as crazy as this sounds, is to take a three wood there and hit a little draw around there, carry all the water at about 255 yards, land it on the green, putting for eagle. No, 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 come on. How do we hit 277? It's two shots of 140 yards. 140, 140. Okay, you don't like 140, 140, you like 150, 130. Beautiful. You like 160, 120. Person. We always have to be thinking about what we want into the greens. Let's play the golf course. Don't let the golf course play us by tempting us into silly shots. A lovely shot. Just a little punchy one. See, because it's such a stress-free shot, my swing just chills out a little bit. I just 112. Chill. So whatever happens with this club, I have to clear 112 and 127 is the pin. There's not much wind up there, but we want to clear 127. So why don't we just do a pitching wedge, make sure we get over, because if we avoid hazards, we make better scores. Now remember to keep this within your handicap range, within your ability. If you were in the position I was in with the drive, you can always punch it out sideways and then complete the hole that way. Sometimes four shots is good enough to hit this green, depending on the stroke index for your handicap. So if you're a 15, more than likely a six here is a great score. If you're a nine handicap, a six here is more than likely a great score. Matty Boom Boom for the birdie. What a putt. Go in. Oh, Caddy, no good. So we have a par five here. It's a long-ish one. But the problem we have is there's water cutting the fairway in two there. So we can't hit a driver because it's going to hit in that water. F small percent chance that we're going to stay short of it. But even if we do, what's the chance of hitting that second shot on the green from that angle, not having a tree in our way, not having all carry over water, having to hit a big hook toward water? Infinitesimally small, tiny. So I'm going to take my most confidential club because this is a three shot hole. I'm going to plan six iron. Maybe another six, maybe a wedge. What's my third shot gonna be? That's the key shot on a par five. Not my best six iron. Maybe 310 yards. What do we want into the green? That's the key question on a par five once you're in play. From 310, 320, what do I want into the green? I'd love a wedge of some sort. So anything inside, 140. So if I hit a decent seven, we're gonna leave ourselves about 140, 150 in, and that's okay. I might have a wedge, I might have a nine. A lot of people will say, oh, this relies a little too much on your short game and dee dee bada bidi bing bong. We can only rely on our short game. Like, come on, how many of us have got the long game of professionals or the long game that's consistent all the time. The one place you can be consistent all the time is the short game. You're gonna miss more greens than you're gonna hit, doesn't matter what strategy you use. So as a double digit handicap, as a low handicap, you're probably gonna average between two or even one green and eight greens around max. 
So you've got to find ways of missing correctly there by default, you're going to have to chip and putt. That's just the way golf is for amateur golfers. We've got 100 yards here. We're going to try hit this green. If we don't, hey, we're going to scramble our little asses off. We want to carry this bunker for sure. For me, I know there's a 56 degree, but let's try hit a decent shot here without digging half the ground out and striking freaking oil. Oh, that's too long. That's teethed a little bit. Now watch your putt as it rolled past the hole. I was, if I didn't watch that, I would have assumed it's coming this way, but it actually comes this way on the way back. That's big help. Gives me good intel instead of guessing the wrong break which means I can make the return putt with ease. This is, the, this is not a long par five, this is 465 yards. So we have to decide, can we hit this in two? So I'll do a three shot hole and I'll try my driver to really make it a two shot hole. And then we can compare because there's no disgrace in playing a par five as a three or four shot ever. Just get it in play. We're definitely not going for it in two with that one. And that's okay. We decide on the tee. Okay, three shot is fine. Let's try the driver. When I hit it good, I hit it real good. We've got 260 yards left to the hole. We've pushed it to the right. So that's the decider for us. We don't even have to think that much. It's a three shot hole now. It just depends which way I go. I can go over this way, which is more risk, more reward to go 180 yards and leave myself from 260, leave myself an 80 yard shot to the green. But I have to clear all of it, otherwise I don't make it over the water hazard. Or I go left about 120 and leave myself 150 into the green. I'm gonna take the 120 route to be really safe and then we'll do a slice as well to see the other option. So we'll take a pitching wedge and we'll just bunt it down there near my driver and then go from 150 yards into the green. Okay, we don't want to go that far left because the further left you go on the layup, the more distance you add to the triangular shot. Okay. So I can do this shot as well. Lower loft is easier to slice, not so easy to hook it. So it's a much easier slice shot. We'll start it uh, on the bunkers and hopefully go toward the right, leaving us a beautiful shot. Am I in frame? So we'll line up the club face to the target. Maybe put the ball a bit further forward, stance way left. I'm gonna probably push my hands a bit forward without opening the club face. And then that's gonna be in play a better shot, but that is only if you can hit that shot. I learned that shot with my coach, Eric, and it never fails anymore because I got the exact way to do it. You can check the link for that video in the description to see how to hit that shot too. This is the drive we hit, absolute boomer. It landed there on the downslope and rolled right through. The ground's really firm, so I've only got a very short distance in of 175 yards. So 175, we've got the shot. We don't need a layup. If you can hit a drive down here, you've got the shot. So we've got 175 on a downslope, firm turf. It's gonna squirt right. Let's not fight the squirt. Let's give it a little, maybe, one more club, let's go six iron, and let it come out low, squirt right, and give us a chip from the right-hand side of the green. Okay, we're gonna hit that six, get our shoulders with the slope. Oh, it's a little wetter here, so that's nicer. It won't hurt as much, maybe the ball will go straighter. Little right squirter, and we got the chip on the right-hand side of the green. Easy game. Now, no one can negotiate that a driver in play is going to give you the shot into the green. No one can argue against that if you have the skill to do it, which I just did over there. This one is a decision from the tee shot, which it didn't work out that well, or it becomes something where you don't give yourself the option to have to decide to go in two because you hit a shorter club off the tee. All of these tactics are perfectly fine. Go ball. Go. Okay, not too bad. Perfect. We left ourselves 83 yards after that big slicer. Now, 
Golf is so multi-dimensional. It's so nuanced. You can do anything you want. Look at that. I went four iron, lay up, wedge, four iron, slice, sand wedge, driver, six iron, whatever's going to keep your ball in play and get you the best result. The game is about getting it in the hole in as few as possible. 83 yard shot, not my best, but I think I have it. So let's give it a whirl, get that rotation, titties to the target, Matty. No, you see, this is why I hate the shot. So when I don't play for eight weeks, I leave a shot like that, and it's not as good as a full wedge shot. That's why I like to talk about full wedge shots and people lose their marbles about it. When you're not playing that often, it's difficult to control the partial wedge shot. So leave shots that you're comfortable with. It doesn't matter the power of the hole. If you leave difficult shots for yourself, you're gonna leave yourself another difficult shot after the difficult shot. Higher handicappers or higher scorers also just hit more difficult shots in a row. One difficult shot to another to another, and it can start with a high stress tee shot or a high stress second shot, which then cascades into more bad stuff. That 83 yard shot, not my favorite. It's now left me a freaking 25 yard shot, which I also don't like. So I do my best. And as you can see, without playing so long, I'm not good at the pitching. I have to take some time to work on that. So that's why the full shot works so much nicer in this situation. When you've practiced and you're really confident from these distances, bam. Okay. <laughs> it's all about the pace, huh? Well, this one's for the eagle next to the green, but I don't have my proper chipping club here for this situation on the wet cow grass, so I'm just going to put it on and see if we can get it close. Yep, that's good enough. That's a birdie putt. That's a par putt. And it's all about the short game. Eventually it comes down to the short game. So it's always best to have a strong short game so that you can actually finish off the holes and make the birdies. Or if you leave yourself five, six footers for pars, hopefully you can make those. And if you don't, go work on them on the practice screen. This is a pretty long par five. You're not gonna see many of them this length. This is 560 yards. It's nearly 600 yards long and that's a hole you're not going to hit in two shots, perhaps if you're one of the top PGA Tour pros. So that means it's a three shot hole, and I'm going to do what, what really triggers the boyfriends. I'm going to hit an iron off the tee, because if you don't have the distance to get there in two, okay, maybe three. If you don't have the distance to get there in, four, in three shots, which will be an average of about 180 yards, 190 yards a shot, maybe you have to take a four shot hole. That's all you have to do is just hit it there in play, and then take three more shots to get to the green, hope for a par putt, maybe make a bogey, walk off a nearly 600 yard hole with a six. No problem with that. We have no problem with that. So we hit the four iron ski. Ooh. Now we're gonna do the driver play. right through a tree. So let's say we got 340 yards left, we've got two shots of 170. If we can't and we leave it short, it's fine. We try to still get it on with our next shot and if that one doesn't reach the green, at least we green side for three. No four shot hole is not a problem. We've got to keep this one in play, give ourselves a nice third. And I hit a terrible one because my wrist and forearm are very sore, but that's a shot that you might hit and it works out perfectly. Don't get angry. It went forward closer to the hole. And here we reach the position after the drive, which wasn't very good. And we've got about 300 yards left to go. So 300 yards, we're gonna do the play that everybody thinks you need to do and hit the longest club we have in the bag. I don't like a three wood off a tight hard lie like this with trees on the left, but let's give it a whirl, girl. So that's the best three wood I'm going to hit from that lie with a new Tacoma. So we left ourselves the 160 yard shot. So, so we're going to hit a shot up here. We can see that we've got 
a nice landing strip there between the two bunkers. We don't really have much danger on the shot. It's well positioned. Now this ball is on a slope with a ball above my feet, so it's going to draw. So I'm going to take a 7 iron from 163, aim it a bit right, and hopefully it pulls it back left to the hole, to the left side, which is much safer than the right side. Just a dead straight shot. And we're just on the green on the right side. That's perfect, good planning. I aimed it on the left edge of the bunker so it won't go in it if it goes straight. But if it pulls off the slope, we're in a good side to miss on the left side. So this is the thoughtless one. This is the hit as long as possible all the time. But I would like to draw your attention to the fact that if you watch my videos, I very rarely have these 50 yard, 45 yard, 60 yard bunker shots ever because I always plan to never have them. With this kind of play, you're gonna find yourself in this position a lot more without thinking and plotting your way around the hole, chopping it up. So now, what do you do from here? I, I don't know the shot. I, I don't play this shot much. I can't clip it with a wedge. It's gonna go way over the green. So I take a pitching wedge and I try a splash shot. 90% chance I don't reach the green, but let's see if we get lucky. Okay, that was the 10% I got it on the green. <laughs> Okay, too long. Tom, that's going to really help you. Sometimes you might get a three putt. Let's see what happens with this. I'm not going to take much time. No, luckily you get a two putt. So two putting or one putting is going to drop your scores. If you use any strategy, if, three, if you three putt, you're going to raise your scores unnecessarily. So you have to get good at getting the ball in the hole one or two putts. Alaywa. Like, 